you know, personally, like, for example, uh, behind the pulpit that I, I stand on to serve uh, the congregants, you know, I, I, I declared to them, I told them, I cannot stand behind this pulpit and direct you in terms of who to vote for. But if you want my personal opinion, come to my office. Let's talk about it privately. <laughs> so that's, I believe that uh, uh, we need to be able to understand that uh, there are positions of authority that God places us into. And from that space, we have to be very considerate and very wise and skillful in terms of how we shepherd our nation. Um, and indeed, you know, we have, to, we, we teach, we've been teaching over the last almost a year and a half or so sharing within the, the evangelical churches and community in terms of the, 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 the different qualities that would uh, uh, provide for a, mm. a good leader. And so we, we teach on that so that those values that um, are ethical and ethical values and good morals and good leadership traits, they begin to paint a picture to the congregants in terms of who who should actually become the next leader. Mm. But then in terms of pinpointing and endorsing and publicly from the pulpit, being able to declare that this is the man before even he is elected, um, it positions, it sheds a bad light for, for those who do that. And again, you know, uh, it's not like uh, we only have one major denomination or re Christian religious group. We have so many denominations mm. and therefore the different uh, schools of thought and um, uh, uh, sources of learning have actually provided for the different ones to think uh, based on various perspectives mm. on these matters. But actually I agree. We need to be very cautious, lest, <laughs> in a sense, God confound us yeah. after election day. The man who you, you, you endorsed and anointed then uh, they, uh, does not win. Mm. Uh, then we begin to be deemed as false prophets. I can imagine can, how mm. the kind of a picture that you portray to your to your flock, so to speak. Sure. All right. It's the same thing. Even uh, the one uh, once maybe some vote. But he don't have some qualities. Mm. Mm. We know some people, they don't have manners. Mm. We can tell people, not so and so, but we can tell, we can't elect someone with such manners. We can't elect someone with such manifesto. But mm. we can't mention the name there in front of people. Mm. But someone so it's an who indirect comes with endorsement. Things, it's yes, an endorsement either, with but indirect. things against the books. We know in our country, it's a secular nation. But someone comes in front of people, goes against the holy books, things which is not there. Understand? At that time, we will stand in front of people and say, no, we can't vote so and so. If it's this, it's her or his manifesto, mm. no, we can't do that. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yes. okay. That's quite interesting. Let's talk about your role in this remaining two days, because the campaigns are over. Um, it's just today and tomorrow. Some of these leaders will be trooping to churches and places of worship to seek divine intervention. This remaining two days, what is the role of religious leaders? Well, the main thing is just to guide the people, to guide our followers. Like uh, today, it's Sunday. On Friday, I was with the big, big lecture in my mosque there, Park Road Mosque. We talked about peace. First, it's the thing, because the main, the one who brings the peace, it's Almighty. Mm. So we guide the people because the, vo the politicians have finished their work. Mm. So it's for us, Kenyans. So we turn back. We ask for peace because these people, you know, sometimes I wonder how many, we are almost 50, 50 million plus people yeah. in this country, mm. but we've been controlled by just less than 10,000. There's not more than 10,000 uh, uh, politicians in this country, yeah. but they control us. The peace we have in all this time, we live together, we are together. My neighbor is my neighbor. Mm. Why do we change during this time? Why can you ban for someone's house or someone's vehicle because of politics? Mm. So it's high time there. Our big role is still to guide them. We cry. We wake up at night. We ask Almighty God to protect us from any calamity, to maintain the peace that we have. And again, to tell our people, 
when you vote there because we have problem let me tell you mm. we tell our people when you vote just leave the place go mm. home wait for the results mm. but these politicians they tell them don't leave the place stay there protect our votes so you see we have a lot of problem mm. because imagine a place of 20000 people all of them they are waiting they are protecting their votes mm. that's calamity the skirmish starts there right. so we have to tell them another important thing we should not stop our things our daily routine because of politics mm. just the politic day we go there during voting day we vote after voting we do everything we have to do mm. go back mm. to your work mm. go back to your worship do you have your chamber go and do something mm. but mm. there are certain people they're just waiting around the corner and spreading rumors there is nothing happened ah kume waka kuwaka you don't have evidence it's not sure you are the one to share some messages to give tension to people mm. so we try to guide our people don't spread any messages don't put fear on others there is something there is nothing bad but just fear there are certain people live in nairobi mm. going to upper country mm. and that's not good because i like to ask our people you live in nairobi the whole year all the things you work in school here health care it's here why do you vote in somewhere that you don't live this mentality is strong with our people <laughs> we should guide them and tell them what they that's a point that's a point development is your place and then you leave you go somewhere else that's, that's quite a challenge that's yes, a point that's a point of discussion some will tell you yeah, i'm going to my brother or my wife or my cousin or whatever you know yeah <laughs> point of discussion but then a very good point there from from shake but um bishop let me ask you how has charged enhance democracy in our country or faith-based organization mm -hmm. uh shake you can also answer that when you get time how has faith-based organization enhanced democracy we have you know bishops like bishop okulu i you know isa muge we have got reverend joya mm -hmm. they are on the front line quite literally mm -hmm. what about today times change um and uh, has the role of church changed not at all good but times change but the role still remains but then when we come of age mm. the, our style and strategy of engagement cannot be just based on history mm. we have to grow up we have to engage and like i already mentioned earlier uh, within the church fraternity and particularly the we have the evangelical alliance of kenya yeah. the council of uh, uh, Catholic bishops and then we have uh, the interfaith also. These are forums that have been uh, on the forefront of engaging even in the democratic space mm. in terms of educating the leaders, the clergy, in terms of how do we participate, how do we engage, how do we engage without necessarily dishonoring leaders because again as much as we, we need to be proactive but then this, the, the Bible teaches us about honoring leaders. Mm. Uh, I cannot go on the streets and start, you know, accusing a president or someone because of some issues. But we have ways and structures and avenues of engagement. And thankfully, in, in, in terms of uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's mm -hmm. term of office, he's been very open and he's uh, invited clergy to come in and talk to him and uh, engage and there's been discussions uh, many times with senior clergy mm -hmm. at different levels uh, to consult and be able to talk about what are the issues. Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, there was the historical times, but then as we advance forward, I believe that we come of age and then God has provided opportunities and the space where we can actually communicate without necessarily going on the streets and yeah. trying to seem like we are the ones really facing <laughs> mm. the, the, the front lines of the battle but it, it, it's very honorable to acknowledge the fact that mm. they are senior leaders without mentioning names who have been engaged in addressing democratic issues they've addressed uh, issues of corruption they've addressed issues uh, of concern mm. to the to the kenyan population among the leadership Absolutely. and that's why like even i mentioned mm. we, within the evangelical alliance of kenya in the past we didn't have this this commission but now we have the Leadership and Governance Commission. Yeah. It addresses some of these things. We talk about these issues and then be able to uh, engage with the leaders mm. at, uh, at, uh, at, at their level. Mm. Yes. All right. Mm. Kyoria? 
Uh, probably even before I pose my question to Bishop, um, it's important that uh, Sheikh um, responds to the role of faith-based organizations in shaping democracy in mm. Kenya, the question you had asked. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We have done a, a lot uh, Muslims, non-Muslims, uh, even Hindus, Christians. My personally, I was there. We met uh, Wafula Chebukati. Mm -hmm. He was with us for two hours in Ufungamano there, mm -hmm. under the leadership interface of uh, Father Mutie. We met even uh, CJ, Honorable Mother Kome. We were with her in Ufungamano over two hours. And all of them, they assured us, religious leaders, that everything in the country will be okay. Even election will be fair election. There will be no anything. We have met even interior ministry. Mm. So there is things behind the scene. We you know religious leaders they are not like politicians. If something small you have to call all the cameras. But there are certain things we do without even engaging cameras. But we have done top top officials even uh, NCCK. We have met about this. So mm. it's high time because According to the research, most Kenyans, the most trustable things in Kenya, first, it's media. Mm -hmm. you, you have big role to play. Media first, and then second, second it's religious mm -hmm. leaders. Mm -hmm. So we are the one to spread everything we are doing. So they have accepted, they came, and all of them, they are humble. They talk well with the religious people. They don't choose a Christian or a Muslim, no. All of us, very humble of them, they assured us everything in the country will be okay. That's why you'll find a lot even this handshake. Behind handshake, mm. there is religious leaders behind it. Mm. Everywhere there is peace, there is religious leaders who are there. Mm. So we have played... Okay. Our role. Okay. Yes. Bishop, right. let me pose this to you because you're the one who makes this point about avenues that exist um, when it comes to engaging government, uh, particularly on issues of governance. Isn't there a risk that was seen by the people who came before you, the likes of Reverend Joy, mm. of if there are avenues of engaging government and you don't come out publicly to criticize government, then the demarcation that is there between state and religion, the boundary gets erased if those avenues exist? Um, yeah, the, 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 the avenues exist because uh, I can rightly say in the past, as clergy, we were seen as leaders who are invited for a special government function just to pray and go away. Mm. Uh, but right now, we, we are on, there is a growing space or acceptance to the fact that clergy can come and sit with governors, sit with members of parliament, sit with senators, sit with the president, sit with his deputy to engage, to talk about democratic issues. Bishop, sorry to cut you short. Yeah. Isn't that the problem? Isn't that the problem then? Because these avenues have been provided for you, and comfortably so, then the church um, is disabled in one way or another to criticize government, and strongly so. Not at all, yeah. because even in that space, we criticize and we address the ills of the nation. Uh, we don't have to go out on the streets and uh, attract the cameras to prove that we are actually uh, advocating for democracy. Uh, we have to come to a place where we appreciate mm. what the, 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 those that have gone before us, what they have done. Look at the scenario in, uh, of the time and the season that they existed and the, the time and season that they agitated for democratic uh, matters. Uh, the times have changed. We are not in that time. The constitution has changed. You look at there is more accommodation of issues and being able to critique in an honorable manner because actually honor is part of godliness and it's part of what the holy books uh, speak to us and uh, so by by utilizing those avenues it does not necessarily mean that we fail to criticize we we talk we talk hard issues i remember i was part of an interreligious or an interfaith uh, gathering that went and had a, you know discussion with the president uh, not too long ago but there were hard issues he talked hard we talked hard and uh, actually and there was peace among us mm -hmm. you know we talk as leaders 
also, again, it's not to say that uh, leaders, clergy, are compromised at, uh, you know, at any given time. If they are, then it's their own personal time. But in terms of our networks and the, the, the available uh, structures of engagement, uh, I, I can commend and appreciate the fact that we had a lot of positive engagement has already occurred. Mm. Thank you. And from, if to if you want to face someone, mm. if you want uh, to engage someone, it should be with him. We can't run from them. The government, it's ours. We pay our followers. So we can't say because government does this and this, we will not talk about anything. We will not face government. Mm. That's what we'll find even the religious persons. They have got some... Uh, uh, big uh, positions in the government, mm. like you see, of Ula Chebukate, the anti corruption. He's uh, not of no. Ula Chebukate, uh, Wabuhala. Bishop Wabuhala. Bishop Wabuhala. Yes. You see, the other one, uh, it's, uh, I don't know, it's uh, NCCK, mm. Uyano. Mm. There is even further there. Mm. Understand? At least when we engage government, we tell them the truth. And this is the only thing that can help Kenyans. When you go, there is certain issues. You know, you'll find a lot of politicians now. Mm. If you want to engage them, you want to talk with them, they counterattack you. You go there, you find uh, some heavy, heavy breakfast, uh, things like that, some <laughs> heavy <laughs> badge. Even you are plan what you're supposed to talk. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. But the right people, when they go, even what you get there, you should tell them the truth. So we came because Sheik, of Sheik, this. Sheik, Sheik, and that this? particular point, that brings me <laughs> to what Kiori asked. Then the, the church and the, all the interfaith organizations, you really have a platform to express yourself because politicians also have a platform to express themselves. Why don't you explore that platform that you have? You go there, have heavy breakfast, and then all of a sudden you go mute. What happens? <laughs> it's a Sheikh. good question. It's a good. <laughs> you know, when you don't have intention for what you are doing, you are doing for Almighty. Mm -hmm. You know, in this work, the religious person, you are pastor, you are imam, you are sheikh, you are father, you are priest. This is not just normal job. Mm. This one you have to sacrifice. You know everything that I'm doing. This is responsible that I will be asked by Almighty. So anything you are doing, because you represent a lot of people. So you go there, you change because of uh, the big bahasha you see it there, or the heavy breakfast, you'll be asked about that. So if we know the responsible, it's good, you keep off. I can't talk the truth, keep off from that caravan. But accordingly, the teachings, if you know you represent the people, you should stand with them. And the best among the best is the one who talks the truth, especially, especially to a rude and arrogant leader. You tell him the truth in front of him. Mm. But if you go, you start to change, maybe you can quit that thing because you can't handle that. You mm. see about prophets, how they look at Moses with Pharaoh. Yeah. He didn't fear Pharaoh was everything, but he mm. told the truth to him. And that that, that is a very important point, and I think that's where Victor, I want you to pick it up with Bishop, yeah. of speaking truth to power. And mm. the examples that you know, um, the Sheikh quotes, particularly in the Bible, are of prophets who would actually call out a leader, and publicly so. My only question is, on issues of governance in Kenya, we have not heard really um, the church, you know, standing to call out those in positions of influence or standing up to power. If they engage these people, and I believe Bishop, as he says, that they engage um, the, um, the people in governance, they do it privately. We never hear, we never get to hear these things. Yes, uh, and just uh, but like I already mentioned, uh, times have changed, mm. and um, the, the the style in which we do things has changed. Uh, we have to be very wise because, again, um, when you talk about leadership and, uh, like, for example, let me use the the the, the example of uh, the presidency. Beyond the individuals uh, who occupy those offices. These offices are established by God. So um, we have to be very, very wise in terms of how do we engage with the leaders. Yeah. Uh, because again, there are things that God gives to us as uh, ministers of God to speak to the, to the leader, not to the general public. Uh, our history in Africa then, you know, kind of 
boast of the fact that if you want to prove a point, then go in the public <laughs> domain and address that particular leader. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, was a, you know that was the case for a time past. But in our modern day, if there are avenues of engagement, uh, we have to actually utilize those avenues. And like Sheikh says, there are credible leaders who are leading and serving, and they do not go in there to be compromised. And we really appreciate it. I wouldn't go into naming names, mm. but there is a commendable work that is being done f across the, the religious divide, uh, which is highly commendable. Yeah. And so we need to appreciate that fact. It's just in the same context. Even if you, let me use a very practical example that I, you know, in my devotion, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart. He said, my son, if, if, if you have a neighbor who comes and sees some mistakes in your home, in your mm -hmm. boma, and he stands on the fence and starts shouting and yelling at you that, hey, this is, this, you're not doing right. You've not taken care of your wife. You're not taking care of your children. How would you respond? Mm -hmm. yeah. I said, I would not listen to him. And he said, <laughs> if, what about if he came on your door, knocked on your door, you had you, some tea together and you had a meal together, then he shared mm -hmm. wisely some of the concerns that he had, would you listen to him? I said, yes. Okay. And I believe that we have to come to that place of uh, maturity where we are able to engage honorably. And of course, those that reject uh, counsel, then mm. their issues will be heard at the rooftops. All right. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And to add from there, yes. mm -hmm. religious people, the holy books, we have told when we engage someone, we use uh, first it's wisdom mm. and good talk. Mm -hmm. Unlike politicians, mm. politicians they are vice versa. Wakingoa <laughs> tunangoa, wakirusha tunarusha. We can't do things like that. <laughs> so we have to use wisdom because someone does what he's doing, you can't go there and you start to shout at him. And all the teachings you should go humble, don't be arrogant step by step. Mm. That's why you don't see cameras. We don't shout. Sometimes there is nothing like that. But there are certain things that goes on. Someone does bad. There are certain religious people selected to talk and engage them. We mm. use just wisdom. No shouting. No things. Because a politician, one word, can do it like that. So we see something big. Uh. But for us, it's just to reach the word with wisdom and good talk and then the rest will leave it. He continues. That's up to him. Okay. Persuasion yes. is what um, Sheikh Ramadan Mwangi talks about, you know, um, and using language of correction uh, and not condemnation. Right about now, we want to go to Kirinyaga. It's a chilly morning, I am sure, in Kirinyaga County. Gladys Mungai is on standby to tell us what is happening in the county of Kirinyaga. It is the home of Azimila Umoja, uh, Deputy Presidential Candidate Martha Karua. Gladys, good morning. Uh, good morning to you, Jen, John Jacob Curia. Indeed, like you rightly put it, we are coming to you live from Kirinyaga County. Technically, following up on the preparation in regards to the Tuesday poll, and after going around a few polling stations, and you remember that uh, the training of the polling clerks after the training of the presiding officers was completed yesterday, and what is happening on the ground is that IBC officials have commenced preparation or going on with their preparation towards the D-Day, that is Tuesday. And now to just tell us what is happening on the ground, I'm joined by the returning officer of uh, Kirgoya uh, Boys. This is where the count constituency <coughs> telling center will be. Mr. Mengi, just to dive into it, what is happening at Kirgoya Boys this particular moment? Uh, currently, we, are, we have just received our fa last bunch of uh, ballot papers. That is the presidential. We have just offloaded uh, them. Then uh, we are in our last trench on uh, packaging the materials. We are 99% packaging, so we are just await we, uh, remaining with uh, these size of trains. You can see them here. And we are saying we are set for the election. Kenyaga Central constituency is set, ready, and ready to go to deliver credible elections. Talk to us about matter security. I've seen a couple of police officers moving around. Yeah, in matter security, we are well protected. 
Uh, we are under 24-7 severance uh, because this is the center where we have kept our materials in terms of parrot papers and our, our materials. The security have been very good. They have been here since we came here. So we have uh, a big team that has always been around 24-7, taking care of the materials Thank you. and giving security. And there you have it. Our anchors are back at our broadcasting house, John Jacob Curia. That Those are sentiments from the constituency uh, returning officers here at Kirugoya Boys, technically telling us that it's all system goes and they are ready to conduct that particular poll. I now hand it back to you so that you can follow up on what my other colleagues are following up in other areas in the country. Back to you, Kyria. Thank you very much, Gladys Mungai at uh, Kirinyaga County. Kirinyaga is quite a huge um, county that has huge constituencies. You have Mwe, um, you have Kirinyaga Central, you have Ndia and Gishugu. Uh, those are the constituencies that form Kirinyaga County and they're quite huge. Mwe is the biggest of them all and Gladys Mungai will be traversing throughout the county um, this entire week as she brings up, uh, us up to speed uh, with what is happening uh, there. Uh, Victor, in the meantime, you can continue engaging Bishop Murunga? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so, Bishop, let me just ask, how has the church um, or interfaith organizations ready for the transparency of this election? Um, in terms of um, engagement, we, like, for example, within the Evangelical Alliance of Kenya, mm. uh, we uh, have accredited uh, observers mm. who are going to be spread across the country. A number of the membership of EAK among the clergy uh, and even the, the top leadership of EAK will mm. be participating as observers to monitor and uh, look at what is going on in in, uh, in, at the polling stations, at the returning, at the, at the tallying centers, at the county level, and even nationally. Um, and, and so I believe that uh, that will give us opportunity to really have first-hand mm. observation in terms of really what's going on and uh, if the, 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 the process uh, will be free, fair, and credible. Uh, so I do believe that uh, we'll be able to get feedback from from the leaders spread across yeah. the country mm. and to to uh, you know uh, communicate mm. in terms of the level of um, the integrity in of the process. Where are we as a nation in terms of preparedness and uh, because you only have 48, 48 hours to go. I do believe that we have uh, we are well prepared. You know, um, I've participated uh, here and there in terms of the IBC meetings and mm. hearing what they are uh, sharing and communicating to the nation. Uh, I do believe that, uh, generally speaking, we are prepared. Mm. We are prepared, and what remains is just basically the the Kenyans to go out in large numbers and cast their vote. Mm and uh, maintain peace and order. We are we, listening to uh, the, the government, the CS Interior and the security agencies. They have deployed their officers countrywide, which is commendable so that we ensure that there is peace. But let us prove the critics and the prophets of doom in Kenya. Let's prove them wrong mm. by us as Kenyans taking lead to provide peace for our neighbors, for ourselves, and for the community at large, and maintaining law and order. Mm. And like we started off, you know, listening to our candidates, our top contenders, uh, it's commendable the spirit in which they are talking about. You know, uh, I, I listened to Mama Ida Odinga uh, the other day, and uh, and she said, you know, if through our campaign season we have wronged anyone, please forgive us. Mm. So forgive. Forgiveness um, and reconciliation in this time should guide the nation yeah. to her next phase. Mm. What remains is just the Kenyans to disapprove their critics mm. uh, and the prophets of doom. Mm. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. Sheikh, I think you can also take it on that. In terms of transparency, the interfaith organizations, uh, your general feeling in terms of readiness on how this election is going to be achieved. We have played uh, our role till where we are. Everyone has played its role, IABC, security, government. So it's up to us. We're in the 20th century. 
we don't have that mentality long time mentality of skirmishes and looting if you have things like that because the biggest blessings that almighty has granted us in this country it's peace it's peace there's a certain time you will reach if you spoil this peace we will be crying like other countries they used to be among the best countries in the world economy wise everything good but today they are crying they are crying because of peace so for us let's maintain this i think everything even in some meetings that have been when we abc everything it's okay there will be no anything that rigging because there are certain rumors goes around these things are finished long time it's just we need just announcement no 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 everything accordingly it's not there till you have finished to vote and every vote will be accountable for mm. so let's stop these rumors let's try our best mm. and this one we don't took blames to everyone you you know everyone you should take you are responsible me myself you yourself take you are responsible just vote wisely and continue your work and let's increase pray for this lovely country all right all right Victor? Okay so let's cross over to Timothy Kipnusu all the way from the home of champions that is in Wasingishu Kipnusu good morning i know it's uh, all systems go behind you yes there you have it good morning <laughs> A very uh, good morning uh, to you, uh, Jacob Kioria, there at the Broadcasting House in Nairobi. I'm still pitching Kamba in uh, Wasingishu County, the home of champions, just to have a feel with the preparations of the elections. Uh, just a day uh, to the election, and uh, uh, from yesterday we had an interview with the uh, Wasingishu County returning officer, that is Irene Motai, who said all is set and they are prepared. Uh, this she said that uh, she has uh, they have received the voting materials required to undertake this particular process and uh, yesterday the last phase of the training of the polling polling clerks uh, was completed and uh, she said uh, they are competent enough to ensure that this particular exercise or the Tuesday exercise uh, is happening uh, seamlessly and uh, I am actually at the bus station here in Wasingishu uh, county a number of uh, uh, residents are traveling uh, to different uh, places where they are registered as voters to exercise their democratic uh, right. And uh, maybe I can just uh, get a, a feel of the resident, just one person, because I understand that uh, we uh, uh, um, our time is not uh, 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 enough. Uh, uh, perhaps Naitwa Nani, Tueleze, kwa hapa wa Singishu, usiana na zoezi la uchaguzi, una umejitarisha kivipi na umejista. Jili kama mpiga kura na pengine maoni kusiana na zoezi hile. Mimi naidwa David Moses Wahisi. Nafanya hapa kwa hii nene stage ya Takore, magari ya kwenda Bungoma. Sasa hapa wazafiri wamekuwa wengi, bei imepanda chuu, sisi tunakula sawa na usalama iko sawa, watu wamefurahia, hakuna mapikano, hapina, hakuna mapingamizi, hakuna kukombana. Sasa hiyo wasingishu iko usalama kabisa. Hapa tunafurahia tuko comf more comfortable so the way we are. Asa tunaona wewe vile vile ndereva na na, na arifio kwamba mmetumia na fursa hii kuongeza nauli. Uh, pengine tuwele kusiana na wasafiri wanapoona wakuja wasafiri hatuje ongeza na uli but tunaenda na venye hali yenyewe iko sababu mafuta iko juu alafu na hali yetu pia inadibidi hivi pia si ndio tutafute kitu ya kula manake tumekaa muda mrefu hatupati kitu ya kula alafu na uli yetu si ati iko juu sana ni mafuta ndio iko juu tunaomba tukipiga kura na mafuta ya gari irudi chini Raila ateremshe kura ama kama ni ni ruta ateremshe mafuta mafuta irudi chini pia si tupate kujienjoy kidogo na maisha yetu maisha yetu iko hatarini sana asante na Mungu ambariki there you have it a number of residents from this particular county is talking about high cost of living and they actually one the leaders that are seeking uh, electric position bait for the presence
the senator, woman rep, of course, also MCS, to ensure that uh, they uh, actually uh, uh, take keen interest of the uh, residents, what they want. And of course, uh, we'll be from here, we'll be heading to church. I understand a number of leaders will be seeking divine intervention, of course, without God, anything is not possible. And we'll be heading there and uh, we will be able to update you what is happening in uh, some of the churches here in Wasingishu County. As I mentioned earlier, this is the political bedrock of the United Democratic Alliance presidential candidate William Samuel Apruto. He was elected three times in this particular uh, uh, county that is Eldridge North and he'll be keen enough to ensure that he captures uh, this uh, vote from uh, 406 registered, 406 uh, 506,138 registered voters by independent electoral boundaries commission. From me, Timothy Kipnusu, I hand you back to studio uh, Jacob Kioria. Timothy Kipnusu, one thing I have to give it up to the Kenyans. This is to sawa, tunakula to sawa. As in, that gentleman was genuine enough. There's nothing to hide. This is tunakula to vizuri. But please, sambaza samsan over here. We are freezing in the capital city. Thank you so much, Timothy Kipnusu. One thing to talk about is that uh, they've said everything is okay. It's peaceful. The only people traveling are those who are going to vote, which I think is something to talk about. All right. So, Kioria, you've had it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, and of course, as Timothy Ekipnusu rightly points out, um, the Deputy President has represented our region for some time as a Member of Parliament. Mm. But I think then it was Eldoret North, as he rightly puts it. Um, I think it has already been split into two constituencies. One is Tarbo, yeah. um, the other one is uh, Capsaret, if I'm not wrong. And that is what is the um, Eldoret North constituency that was uh, then. But unfortunately, we have to take the final remarks. Um, from the two gentlemen in studio uh, because we have to give way to a church service for the Catholic Church and later uh, All Saints Cathedral uh, for the Anglican Church Service. Start with you, Sheikh. Your final remarks. Mm. My final remarks here yeah, is the same thing that I'm repeating. Mm. Peace, peace, peace. Let's wake up. Let's wake up. God has blessed us with a good and beautiful country. Mm. So let's vote wisely. Don't vote because someone is my tribe, because he's from my place. No, look at the one you'll be vote because don't come to regret afterwards. Mm. Because there are certain people, they don't vote. They don't have even voter cards, but they come, they're the first liners to shout, to say things are not good in this country. So try to do what you are doing with your card. And the rest, we leave it for Almighty, because we've tried our best, IBC have tried their best, government, everyone. So it's me and you, let's know what we are doing. But let's maintain peace, 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 because this is biggest blessings. And I repeat that. Inshallah. We don't want to regret afterwards. Inshallah. Hi, uh, Bishop. Um, reality has it that uh, beyond Tuesday, the 9th of August, 2022, um, there will be those that will have won the elections and many who will have failed to clinch the positions that they desired. That usually becomes the bone of contention and uh, something that causes tension and conflict among people groups and uh, supporters. Uh, our prayer, and I believe I speak on behalf of the clergy in this nation, is that um, for the winners, go and celebrate in moderation. For the losers, it's not that you are a failure, but it is just an opportunity to give you a future um, uh, space to be able to run and to lead and not only for the future but most of the candidates you have been serving they have been serving in different capacities go on and continue serving in the capacities within the communities at the local level regional and nationally 
go on and serve the people because leadership is comes from God and uh, the offices are occupied by just a select few but let us go and uh, ensure that there right. is a peaceful country right. uh, and I give to the nation Isaiah 52 verse 7 let us be those who proclaim peace and good tidings fantastic follow your last word all right, I think uh, that is where we wrap it up because if we go past the religious leaders, I think, to Taribu, all right? Mm. All right, so that does it for now. Thank you so much for joining us. We do this again tomorrow. Remember to be your brother's keeper. My name is Victor Lowe. Have a good morning. And on behalf of Jen Wamboi, who is also with us in studio, have yourself a fantastic Sunday. Today we're doing things differently. We start with the Anglican Church Service and later the Catholic Church. My name is John Jacob Curie. Keep it KBC Channel 1 because we have got you figured out through the entire time. KBC is strategically positioned in every part of this country to bring you live results and live analysis of the election 2022 because indeed, Kenya is watching. Mithali sita ishirini kama sikiza tunkwenye simu yako bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash Mithali sita ishirini mwanangu shika maagizo ya baba yako wala usisahau mafundisho ya mama yako yaweke daima moyoni mwako yafunge shingoni mwako yatakuongoza njiani mwako yatakulinda wakati ulalapo Kupata mithali sita ishirini, bonyeza star 811 star 817 hash. Star 811 star 817 hash. After intensive campaigns, manifesto unveiling, and insightful debates, the home stretch is finally here. KBC has deployed its crew of professional and experienced journalists to every corner of the country, ready to bring you every angle of the 2022 general election both for tv and radio broadcasts as well as its digital platforms we guarantee you a seamless 24-hour credible and detailed up-to-date news from all the 290 constituencies across the 47 counties as kenya decides
wiki hii kwenye mkulima tutajifunza jinsi ya kupima mchanga na umi wake kabla ya kufanya upanzi. Wema atatembelea ndio tumweleze kama mchanga yake iko na vijeni mbaya zile zinaweza dhuru mumea. Ungana nasi Jumapili saa 9:30 hapa KBC Channel 1 kwa uwanja Log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, sports, politics, lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV shows for the day's biggest stories. Trust with the news and family entertainment. Log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere.